Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will talk about the chromosomal theory of inheritance. So this was the fundamental theory of genetics which identified chromosomes as the carriers of genetic material. Because before this, the uh, genetics laws were all governed by Mendelian inheritance. Now in those laws, Mendel was not aware about the role of chromosomes in carrying the genetic material. As per Mendel, there were factors who were the units of inheritance. So this theory was the first theory to tell that chromosomes were the real carriers of the genetic material. So it is also known as Bovary Sutton chromosome theory after the name of the scientists Bovary and Sutton who together initiated the proposal for this theory, chromosomal theory of inheritance. Now as per this chromosome contain genes. So when chromosomes separate during the course of any cell division, the genes also separate. Now when the genes separate, they are that is how they get transmitted to their offsprings because the cell divides to form the offsprings. So when the cell divides, the chromosome divides, the chromosome contains genes, so the genes also divide. So pairing and separation of a pair of chromosomes would lead to the segregation of a pair of Mendelian factors they carried. So it, it was seen with this theory, it was observed that whatever laws Mendel had given, they were also not absolutely incorrect. They were also correct because Mendel said that the uh, the factors or the alleles segregate for gamete formation. So here also it was seen that the chromosomes also separate out to form gametes and again chromosomes pair up for pairing and recombination. So pairing and segregation was part of chromosomes as well. And since chromosomes contain genes, so the way chromosomes behave or also the affect, also influence the way genes will behave. So that is what was observed with this theory. So basically, if you look at the process of cell division, whether you look at meiosis 1 or meiosis 2, you get to see that uh, everywhere it is the chromosome that gets divided. So the separation happens between the chromosomes and every time the chromosomes separate, the genes also get separated and each of this then goes to a new individual or the new offspring and this is how the genetic traits are being passed on from one generation to the other generation. Now. This theory of inheritance, the chromosomal theory of inheritance also needed an experimental verification. So that is what I was talking about, right? That even Mendel performed a lot of experiment to come up with the Mendel's laws of inheritance. So uh, similarly, in order to prove the chromosomal theory of inheritance, experimental verification was required. And that experimental verification was provi provided by a famous scientist called Morgan. So Thomas Morgan was the one who performed a series of experiments with fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster and he actually proved that the chromosomal theory of inheritance existed. Now Morgan is often termed as the fly man of genetics because of the number of experiments which we performed with the fruit fly. So fruit fly is a very common fly which you normally see hovering around, uh, around your fruits or you also see them near the fruit trees and all. So this is a fruit fly. So what did Thomas Morgan do? So let us quickly see. So Thomas Morgan is also known as the father of experimental genetics because he was, I mean, his work was mostly based on the experiments which he performed with Drosophila. So he's called father of experimental genetics. He is linked with the discovery of linkage, crossing over, sex linkage, crisscross inheritance, linkage maps, gene mutations. So he has actually worked in a lot of areas in genetics. So he gave a new direction to the Mendelian genetics. So Mendel gave the basic rules of genetics that was absolutely correct and that is why he is the father of genetics. But Morgan by performing so many variety of experiments, he actually helped in discovering many new things. He, when you talk about linkage, crossing over, all these things actually tell us that how the traits 
I mean, uh, how new plates are being seen in an offspring, which doesn't resemble either the father or the mother. It also tells us about sex-linked inheritance, where we see that there are some types of, some patterns of inheritance, which get passed on from mother to son or from father to daughter. So he spoke about a lot of things. He also spoke about something called genetic mapping, where he could actually relate the distance or the location of the genes on a chromosome. So he worked on quite a few things and we will try to touch most of them here in this lesson. He was the one who proposed the chromosome theory of linkage. So linkage was one of the primary areas of his study. So he did a lot of uh, study on linkage and he gave the chromosome theory of linkage. So we will see what, what that theory was. So before that we need to understand what is linkage. He is often called the flyman of genetics because he extensively performed experiments on the fruit fly. So now the way we discussed that Mendel choose, chose the pea plant for his experiments. Now in a very similar way, uh, even Morgan chose Drosophila after giving a lot of thought to it. So why Drosophila? Why did he choose Drosophila or fruit fly, whatever you call it? Now, there were quite a few reasons. So one of them is they complete their life cycle in just two weeks. So they have got a shorter life cycle. Now once their life cycle is completed, what does that mean? The shorter the life cycle, the more generations it can produce. So that means within two weeks, you will actually have another generation of uh, fruit fly. Again, the next generation will be able to give you another generation in less than two weeks. So that is you get one generation after another in a shorter period of time. So that means a small life cycle is helpful. Could be easily grown in laboratory. Now, for experimental purposes, you just can't allow the fruit flies to be independent and then just roam around wherever they like. You, you want them because you want to maintain the count. You want to see what kind of individuals are being produced as a result of sexual reproduction. So you have to grow them in the laboratory and it was seen that uh, drosophila was quite easy to be grown in a synthetic medium in laboratory easily distinguishable male and female flies this is very important now when you want to perform uh, sexual reproduction it is very important that the sexes are uh, completely distinguishable from each other because otherwise it becomes very difficult to understand whether it is a male or a female even that takes up, consumes a lot of your time. So that means here, there were quite a few differences which were quite noticeable and it could easily help to distinguish which one is a male drosophila and which one is a female drosophila. So some of the very common uh, differences were the female drosophila were normally larger in size than the male drosophila. If you look at their abdomen, the female drosophila had a pointed abdomen. So if you look at the end of the abdomen, you can see that they have they have a pointed abdomen. Whereas if you look at the male drosophila, you don't see a pointed abdomen. They just have a blunt end. So it's, it's, it's a blunt end of the abdomen. You see, there is no sharp end like how it is in case of the females. Also, in case of males, the last two segments of the abdomen are quite darker. So here if you see the last segment, I mean this entire um, abdomen is all segmented in these flies. So if you look at the last segments, the last segments are darker in color. Whereas in case of females, you do not see those darker last segments of the abdomen. Another important thing is the sex <coughs> combs are present on the four limbs of the male fruit fly. So these are called sex forms. No, from distance it, it looks very small. It, it, it's almost like a dot like structure but when you actually observe it very closely it is in the shape of a comb. It looks like a comb. And what do they do? They are called sex forms and they can be seen only by microscope. They are so tiny. And these sex forms are not present in the female drosophila. So that means there are quite a few uh, points of differences which makes a male drosophila and a female drosophila very much different and that is how they can be easily distinguished which is male and which is female. 
large number of contrasting traits that is something which is always desirable when you are experimenting on genetics because you want to actually cross different contrasting traits and you want to see what kind of output is coming up so if you talk about the contrasting traits in case of drosophila the different there are a set of drosophila which have different eye color like some of them have red eye some of them have white eye again if you talk about their wing shape some of them uh, have a different wing shape like vestigial wings some of them have normal wings if you talk about their body color some of them are yellow some of them are brown so body color eye color wing shape so these are examples of some of the contrasting traits which you can see in drosophila so body color eye color wing shape so these are all examples of the contrasting traits present in drosophila large number of flies are produced with one mating so one sexual intercourse and a lot of flies are being produced so the number of offsprings that are being produced is very high and again that helps because when you have small number of flies you can actually get them uh, mate with each other and produce more and more flies they have four pairs of chromosomes so that makes the study quite easier now if you talk about the human cells we have 46 chromosomes right so 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now if somebody wants to experiment with human beings, it becomes a tedious job because there are 23 pairs of chromosomes and you actually need to study what's happening in each of those chromosomes. But here in this case, they just have four pairs of chromosomes. And out of these four pairs, three pairs of chromosomes are the autosomes. That is, they are the chromosomes which control the somatic traits. That is the traits of the body cells. And the last pair, that is the fourth pair, is the sex chromosome. So they just have four pairs of chromosomes. So here the sex chromosome determines whether it is a male or a female. So if you talk about a male drosophila, they are heterogametic. That is their sex chromosomes will either be X or it can be Y. Whereas the females, they are homogametic. That is, they have both X chromosomes. Well, we'll talk about those sex chromosomes later. So, for now, you just understand the reasons why Drosophila was chosen by uh, Morgan for his experiments. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.